Good afternoon and welcome to The Joy Show, where being your unique and remarkable self is truly a gift to all of us. All righty, are you ready, everybody? Today, I'm so excited. We have Alberto and Moni. And Alberto is a spiritual artist, and Moni is a storyteller and pilgrim, award-winning authors of Walking for Peace. And they have got a love story that, oh, I just can't wait to hear it all and to share it with you. They walked and met at the end of the world after they had both walked individually the Camino. Well, welcome, Alberto and Moni. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. Hello, Barbara. Okay, Hello. they're frozen. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, H how we look now? <laughs> you look marvelous. <laughs> okay. Then. Thank you, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so tell me about your journey, where you met and how this relationship got started. Well, as you mentioned uh, at the at the beginning, we met in a town called Finisterre in Spain. Uh, it literally means the end of the world. I had uh, quit my job, essentially. I had a, a corporate career and um, I had thrown on a backpack and had embarked on a quest, if you will, to try and understand my life, um, why I was all of a sudden divorced, why I was alone, why I wasn't happy in my job. <laughs> I think all of the things that many people uh, perhaps at some point or another begin to ask themselves, um, yes. especially when you think you've played by the rules and you've done all the things that society asks of you. And so um, I literally just threw on a backpack. I started traveling by myself and my journey landed me on the Camino, which I had heard vaguely about. Uh, back. This was back in the year 2001, not quite as popular as it is, you know, today. Um, and it, I just started to walk and the journey of walking and putting one step in front of the other became the opportunity to really confront and look at all the fears that I was holding, all of the things I, in my day to day, I didn't have time to pay attention to, and to especially begin to develop a relationship with the divine. Back then I called it the universe, um, the angels, um, and perhaps today I would call it other things, but it was that loving presence that I was learning to develop a relationship with and to learn to listen to its voice and to be guided by it. And that was a very big deal for someone who comes from a very, you know, left brain. I have a science degree. I have an MBA, very, you know, very left brain, logical planning, organizing to leave that aside and say, I'm just going to walk without plans and listen to this voice and inner guidance and have and follow the signs and that it was um, leaving before me. It was a very big, um, a very big shift in the yeah. way that I, I was approaching my life. And I know, in that, mm -hmm. what, you know. Yes. Can you, you walk uh, the Camino too? I have not walked it. Oh, okay. I have not, but I do know a few people who have. And that time of alone and, you know, the the fears that come up, but also the awareness of who I am. When all things have been stripped away, who am I really? Exactly. So for you, that's that's a remarkable journey. Okay, continue. I'm no that that was that's you know, really the that time of walking alone was invaluable because it, it kind of sowed the seeds and, and put me into the practice of learning how to listen to not just yeah. my logical voice, but to that presence that I knew was walking with me. And it was that presence through a series of coincidences that planted the seed in my mind of walking, of making another pilgrimage, going from Rome to Jerusalem on a path that was called, that is called the way of the soul, the way of the soul. And so it was um, do we have time to, do you want me to explain uh, a little bit of how yes, it was, yes. well, I was told that anyone who is on a journey of spiritual awakening needs to walk three paths, three journeys, go on three journeys. The Camino is one journey and it's called the pilgrimage or the way of the sword, the sword oh, the oh, of, of, of um, courage. It's the place where you battle your fears. It's the place yeah. where you face all of your fears and you find the courage and the strength uh, to continue in your life's journey. 
there's a path that goes from London to Rome called the way of love, where you explore the meaning of love in all of its dimensions, not just, you know, romantic love and relationship love, but the greatest love that exists. Yeah. And then there's a, a path that leads to Jerusalem, a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And that pilgrimage is called the way of the soul. And it's the place where you connect with your highest calling, where you connect with your purpose. And when I heard that this pilgrimage existed, it was, uh, uh, that's what I have to do. I have to go to Jerusalem. Uh, it, it was literally just like that. It was, I, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. That's my calling. Um Quickly, I found out that there is no route, there is no Camino, there's no path. It is literally going to be just walking on the side of the road. But I really felt that this was the calling. And you know in your heart when you've yes, received yes. it and you know this is it. And um, by the time I arrived in Finisterre, I said, okay, this is, I'm determined to do this. I'm going to walk alone. But then Destiny had other plans and Alberto showed up, was in Finisterre at the same time. Yeah. yeah, Alberto, you had just completed the Camino. Yeah, I had already, uh, when I met her, I just finished the, um, my Camino like, like she did. It uh, yeah. was my second time. I, I had gone to the Camino before, the, the year before. Uh, usually the people that do the El Camino, the pilgrimage, they repeat. They usually <laughs> try to go later again because it's, it's something that enriches you, um, you, the experience and... It's, it's, it's a journey. The, the funny things of this pilgrimage is, the, uh, and we like to talk about this, uh, is an outer journey, it's a journey in the world, but it's pointing you to an inner journey. Then through that outer journey, you are going deeper in, to, to know yourself. No, that was uh, something that I already, I already experienced no? in my first uh, pilgrimage. And in this second Camino, I was living it. Uh, like money, I was in my own personal quest uh, a few years early. I had uh, several experiences that bring me to the acknowledgement of um, the spiritual journey that yeah. for many years I had keep beside that um, I didn't I didn't think I, I was not connected to the divine anymore since I was a child. And, and with the Camino, with the pilgrimage, uh, the first time that I went, I found that was a, a perfect way to experience and to practice what I already was learning. You know, you study, you read uh, books, mm. you read courses, and, and, and you learn a lot of theory, but you need to practice it. You need yes. to put it in, in practice in your day-by-day in uh, -day life. And mm. a pilgrimage like, like the Camino, or any journey that you do with the same intention, or anything that you do in your life with the same intention to experience the truth, it's a perfect way to practice this in the experience, in the day, but especially in a place that you don't know, where you don't have the, the usual people that mm -hmm. you relate every day, that you don't have the same experience, you don't have the routine of every day. Then El Camino was perfect for, for that because I, I meet a lot of new people, uh, a lot of new places, and I had a lot of new experiences that I wouldn't have had in my home, where, yes. where I, I come from. Then that was very interesting. And I could feel too very clear the how she said the synchronicities and the presence of the divine, the angels at that time, like her, I call it in, in different ways, uh, but uh, I, I knew that was the presence of God, the presence of God that walked with us wherever we are, he, he, she is with us. And in this journey, especially where we surrender to, to mm -hmm. his or to uh, her will, uh, we, you can feel it even more because you are totally focused in the journey. Then yeah. it's, it's more clear to um, and, and more um, en enrichment, you know, like, like, I, like I said before. Then I just finished this, my second journey that was really amazing in, the, in what uh, it offered to me. Mm -hmm. And there, uh, after to, to, to be aware of, of the message that I received, that was a message over all things, was a message of trust. Trust in life, trust in me, in, in God, trust in yourself and, and follow my path that I will tell you where you need to go. After yeah. receiving that message, I yeah. met money. I met money in the last city, in the end of the world, the last city of this pilgrimage, yeah. the end of the world. She was there. But at that moment, I didn't knew. I, I didn't know that I was going to walk with her and to do this other journey. But uh, yeah. it, it was a, a moment I encountered 
where she told me and uh, to me and another people because she didn't know me and I didn't yeah. know her. I didn't speak English. She didn't speak Spanish at that time. Yeah. But she told to the people that was there that she was thinking. I was. She had felt the calling to go to Jerusalem to do this other journey, this other walk for peace to Jerusalem yeah. in the way of the soul. And at that moment, I say, "Wow, brave! This woman is brave. It's, it's courageous. Good for her." But I didn't see myself there because I, the first thing I didn't know her <laughs> at all. Yeah. But like. <laughs> It always happen, you know, this synchronicity, when you open yourself and you say, bring me wherever you want that I go and I will exactly. go. Two months yeah. later, we meet again, just when, how mm -hmm. she said before, when she was going to start, when she was going to, to travel to, to Rome. In her journey to Rome, she stopped in a city, in a town in Germany to meet a pilgrim mm -hmm. of, uh, that she knew, that she met in, in, in this, in El Camino. And with that, Pilgrim, I was there too. And we meet again, <laughs> just when she was going to start the journey. And at that moment, I was asking again to, to life, to the universe, to God, okay, I am ready. Tell me where you want that I go. And, and I was feeling that God was telling me, be patient. You are going to know. <laughs> you are going to know. You know. What you to do. <laughs> and when she arrived, she arrived to Bonn. The moment that I went with this pilgrim to, to meet her, I didn't think that that was the, going to be the path. Oh, I started to, to see signs everywhere. Balloons, uh, you know, these balloons. That, hot air balloons? Hot, hot air balloons that are going up. Uh, signs in the, in the streets say, here it is. So <laughs> this is the next step. <laughs> you know, synchronicity is like that, very clear. And after, you know, when she offered to me to walk, she offered to me and to another pilgrim mm -hmm. to walk with her to Jerusalem, uh, for me, it was again a new chain, a new, new, very big chain in my life. But the signs were very clear. Yeah. I asked the meditation to God, you know, this is what you want. And, and, and you know, the answer was very clear yes, this is, this, this is not only what I want, this is what you want, but you don't know yet. <laughs> but this is what you want. And this is how, how I started, you know, the, the journey together in some way. Yeah, because really, um, I was only asking to be polite. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't asking, expecting anybody to say yes. If you want to go. It's like, hey, if you want to join us, come. It's like, and you know, my friend, the, the pilgrim friend, who in the book we name Hannah, Hannah said, no, I've just come back from a year sabbatical. I, I, I can't go on another journey. But I really said, yeah, this is. Well, and I, I, well, I didn't say yeah. I, I, was, I was really so shocked because yeah. I, I had said to, to, to the universe, I had said to God, you know, if you really want, because I was feeling you, you are going with this woman to, to Jerusalem, you go, I don't, I don't yeah. know her. She does. She has not asked to me. Well, if you want that I go, she need to ask me directly. She need to ask me directly that I go with her. And in that case, I will think about. It. <laughs> I say, you know, I say clear to, to, to go that. And the next day, she asked it to to the other pilgrim. And after, when she say no, she looked to me. She went, well, but if you want, I would love that you can. If you want to come, <laughs> and then at the moment I couldn't deny anymore, you know, because I had asked for a clear sign i had asked if he really wanted to go and then i needed to think and to start to think because i knew that i was going uh, in another big change in my life because all that i had at that moment in my life needed to be stopped you know i was working yeah. i was uh, you know I, I was in many in a relationship in a relationship in many projects and i needed to leave everything behind again for a journey that i didn't know i had never go to jerusalem or so, so far a pilgrimage in these characteristics that were so, you know, unknown, you know, because El Camino, Camino is easy because El Camino, you had places to stay every day, you had yellow arrows, you, it's very organized. But this journey that yeah. she was thinking to do, there was nothing organized. You needed to do by yourself and to look for your accommodations and to look the route that is not a specific route. It was all very, very wild in some way. Yeah. But I knew that if I was doing that, I knew this is I had learned with the Camino and I had seen the, 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 the hand of God and the providence in El Camino yeah. in Spain, how, what I'm going to see in this new journey. And that is what the spirit was telling me is the can because what you want, you are going to find here. This is your next step. Yeah. And that was the reason yeah. for, because I finally accepted and I say, okay, let's go, let's go. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's so powerful because I think so often we get so caught up in logistics and, you know, what's right yeah. and wrong, you know, am I doing the right thing? And in that moment of true surrender, just take me, 
all of a sudden doors open and things happen and it's completely different than you ever expected, but ends up being richer and more rewarding than ever imagined. And so you found true. love. True. It's so well, not yeah. the beginning. Not at the beginning because, <laughs> you know, at the beginning, the first thing I didn't want, and she didn't either, yeah. we didn't want a relationship. We didn't want to go out of our spiritual path, exactly. you know, and we know yes. that a relationship, you fall in love, you become a little crazy and you lose all the, <laughs> all the yeah, love, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't want nothing of that. We, we, we are going to be continuing feeling in our path, in the, spirit, the, the spiritual path is the only thing. And um, of course, I am not going to look, no, no hair, not anybody. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and that was clear for us. At the beginning. Yeah. And truly, like in the beginning, we, we were strangers. We yeah. didn't know yes. anybody like it we, we didn't know each other we, we couldn't was, speak between each other <laughs> yeah like, i mean here we were and it we were thrown together and that's how it felt like we were thrown together um i started working walking a little earlier than him because he needed to tie up whatever he was tying up his life in yeah. germany and so i started walking and then we met up a couple of two weeks later um but really he was a stranger to me he was another yeah. he was a stranger who was some we were trying to figure out how to walk together um you know i was trying I, I i understood and i felt the same hand of destiny bringing us together yeah. but we really needed to learn about each other i didn't know him he didn't know me we didn't speak each other's languages as he said and here we are in italy where nobody speaks either english or spanish and so we were trying to figure out how do we manage an Italian? How do we communicate? How do we get to know each other? How do we walk together? How do we stay loyal to what each of us believes and not lose ourselves? So in the, there was no romantic anything in the beginning, which no one believes. The first, <laughs> no thing, one that we, the first thing that we learned to say in every it's language true. was the word friends. Friends. <laughs> we are not a relationship. We are not a couple. We are friends. We are friends. Amici. Amigos. So really that was, um, but we, we both felt the calling of the divine. This was above all else what brought this, what brought us together is and you know we each had maybe our own way of interpreting what that meant and how to interpret yeah. that and so we were also learning how to do that together because mm -hmm. maybe a sign for me was not interpreted in the same way as a sign for him and so we had to really find a way to okay how do we walk together it's a learning of how to respect what you feel your be your calling is and at the same time do that with another person together and by the way that's something that you continue to do here and now it's not something that just ends you know when you're on a pilgrimage but it was a great practice it was a great way of practicing how yeah. to listen how to listen to the voice of the divine and as much as i didn't want to admit it in the beginning that voice often spoke through him you know, he would tell me things and I say, no, because I want to do it my way. <laughs> this is my journey. <laughs> my you, path. You, you, can, you can imagine that the story had many steps, but at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, uh, she was clear. And for me too, in some way, that it was her idea. It was her journey. She was the one that wanted to arrive to, to Jerusalem to for peace. She had some schedules and I was somebody that had joined her in, yeah. in her yeah. journey. No, that was the idea at the beginning. And for me, I, I accepted it. Yeah, of course. You know, whatever I need to receive, I will receive in this path. But very clear, uh, soon, very soon, sorry, was becoming clear and clear that I had something to say too. And I needed to make choices and decisions that couldn't uh, be attached to the ideas that she had about how to do the journey needed to be attached to the ideas that I was receiving, that we, yeah. I needed to walk in, in a certain way. For that reason, in more than one occasion, we almost, we almost split. We, we needed, we, we thought about it because we were fighting and we were, you know, <laughs> that yeah. this doesn't make sense. But yeah. it, always we arrive to the conclusion, uh, very clear too, they go, let's, let's, let's stop a moment. We need to find here a agreement. We need to find here because we are working for peace. How we are going to be working for peace, Tell the people that were working for peace, and after each one is going to <laughs> to break and to go, is we need to find a way. Yeah. Must be another way, no? Like the cosmic miracle say, must be another way yeah. to do this, where we are honor, we honor our calling, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And isn't that the journey that we're on? I mean, peace doesn't happen because there is no conflict. 
peace happens when yeah. we yeah. use peace in the midst of what we don't understand, exactly. we're not quite comfortable with, in the midst of chaos, we choose peace. And that's yeah. where yeah, it gets birthed. So what a powerful journey for the two of you. That's remarkable. I mean, I it, it, the, the journey really ultimately became about being willing, being willing to own up to the fears that each yeah. one of us had, to the expectations that each one of us carries, to the, you know, the limited ideas that we have, the very, uh, the shackles that we put on ourselves. And okay. peace cannot come forth in the same way that love cannot come forth until all of those barriers to peace and to love are removed and those are the fears and all of those are this is the stuff that we were looking at every day and because we understood that this was a spiritual journey even though in the beginning i didn't want to say it out loud i wanted this was one of the conflicts between that, that was us it. another thing <laughs> that was one of the big conflicts I'll, my spirituality i'll keep to myself we can talk about it but we're not going to talk to the media about it we're not going to talk to anybody else about this unless they ask specifically so, yeah. um, so the understanding was that, you know what, this was an opportunity to truly look at all of the things that are limiting this peace from coming forward into the world. And yes. we both understood that. And we both tried very hard, you know, even though we had our disagreements and the whatever to, to realize, like, this is my fear. This is my judgment. This is why I'm not able to speak authentically when I would really like to be able to do that. And so that was the journey, too. That was the journey of, you know, uh, the removing of the layers, removing of the layers. Yeah. So that peace yeah. can come forward. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's so, it, it, I mean, it's so interesting to listen to uh, the story of your journey because really, you know, I think sometimes when people think about peace, they think, well, you know, it just means that there is no conflict. There is no problem. Somehow I just let it all be perfect. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that life is messy. And whenever two or more people are brought together, it just accelerates the mess so that we learn how to be with one another. I mean, we are one, and yet we have this individualized essence that, you know, we're, we're striving for our individuality. We're trying to find our yeah. voice in the world. And I think as women, we're even stronger with that, trying to push against the male domination. There would be some resistance there as well, I would think, especially with a man you don't know, <laughs> all of a sudden telling you what you should or should not be doing, right? Where yeah. we're headed. So I yeah. love that, that journey for peace. It's, you know, I think sometimes we forget that it comes with bumps in the road that we need to navigate and choose peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we have to be willing. I mean, one of the greatest, um, I mean, Ho'oponopono gets into this, I'll teach yes. you get into this, the course gets into this, that relationship, what relationship offers you is the unparalleled opportunity to be yeah. able to look at what it is within me that I really need to be uh, giving to the Holy Spirit or giving to God or to the angels to be corrected so that I may see my partner truly. And in seeing him truly, I recognize my, my. if I see the brilliance in him, the Christ in him, what the Course will call the, the Christ, if I see the perfection that God created that's beyond the body, that's beyond the apparent conflict we're having, that's beyond this veil that's keeping us and wanting to keep us separate. If I'm able to give all of that part to the Holy Spirit or to God or to the angels and truly sit in the presence of peace and allow that peace in him or that love and that brilliance in him to come to me, then that is what the, the power of relationship offers you is that and if you can practice it and live it truly and be committed to that with one person and the one that person that usually pushes your buttons because you're right. one person <laughs> and you're with them <laughs> if you're able to do that with them continually yeah. then it becomes the foundation for being able to do that and to share that with others so to do that's the power of the relationship yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. I love that. We're going to take a short commercial break and then we're going to be right back so we can just go a little deeper and talk about the book you wrote as well. Books. <laughs> There's so much. All right. You're watching The Joy Show, Just One You, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
And we're back. So we've been talking about this journey of peace that you did to Jerusalem and uh, <clears throat> the loving energy that got formed from there. So let's talk a little bit more about how your relationship actually evolved into the marriage that it is today. You know, I would like to say in in the advertising that had been now uh, it was saying when you look uh, when you change the the way you look at things, the thing uh, mm -hmm. that you look change. In some way, the our relationship, or so to fall in love with each other, it was something unthinkable. Uh, three months or four months after we started to work was unthinkable we, because we were almost going to break in more than one case. We were fighting and we was, you know. I had a lot of judgments about the way that she was doing, especially, you know, what she has said before. She didn't want to talk to say the, the to show the spiritual side of her journey, mm -hmm. uh, especially right. with the with the with the media, with the okay. papers when they interview us in the way. And that was one of the main or well, the more the principal conflict that we have because I wanted to tell my truth. I wanted to say you to know, be authentic. To, to be authentic. Exactly. You know, you know? And then I had a lot of judgment about that. Uh, and for that reason, uh, never we thought about to 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 be involved uh, romantically, no, in, in the journey. But arrived one day that we had a huge fight, and we were in Macedonia, yep. um, very close to very close to Greece, yep. very close to Greece already, uh, okay. in Ohrid. Yeah. And, and we had a huge fight at night because I said, you know, I'm not going to to quiet anymore i'm going to say hell the truth <laughs> because it happened something else there were many things mounting and mounting i i i can and that night i went and i say to her you know you are <laughs> that and that you are not authentic you are you say one thing and think another with me you are so spiritual and we uh, pray together and we do meditation but when we are with the people all is about peace in the world only physical you know Peace, no yeah. war, yeah. but nothing inside, no the inner. You know, that is, and I had a lot of judgment about that. But yeah. when we had the fight that night, and she could say what she thought to, and she was she opened herself vulnerable, and I opened myself vulnerable. And I could see and understand why what was moving her. It was like a veil came down. Because yeah. I was not only talking to her to 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 fight or to attack her. I wanted to understand, and I wanted because I believe that she could change too, you know. And I wanted to see another part of herself. Then, in that way, in that fight, I don't know what happened, but my way of thinking, my way of look at her changed. Change. I was open to that too. If I would have been stubborn, I wouldn't have seen that. But I was open to see that. And then that fight that we had tremendous fight that almost was almost sure that we were going to be apart. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. When at the end, at the end of the conversation, I could see her. I I, I understood. It was clear to me that I had been wrong all the time. She is a good person. She's trying to do the best with what she can. She's only afraid. She's only you know. But she at the same time that she's afraid, she's brave. She's here. She has quick everything, and yeah. she's looking, maybe not publicly, but she's doing her inner journey with courage and putting all at the risk. And then I could see another version, another interpretation of the same thing. Yeah. And at the, at the next morning, I felt that I was, I had fallen in love with her. You know, <laughs> I, I, I was only from the night, previous night to the next morning, was only a, a chain of perspective, a chain of, of perception that the course will, will, will yeah. tell you. And I could see in her the light. I could see in her the Christ. I could see in her the, the, the spark that was moving all that. And I saw a beautiful spark. Independently of what the actions of the things that could be happening, I could see. And that was when <laughs> the next morning she saw me and said, what happened to you? you know, Nothing. Do you want I bring, I, I carry your backpack too? It's very heavy too. too. <laughs> I, I carry my backpack. And what? she was, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting how vulnerability is the yeah. key yes. to well, cracking you. down those walls that we yeah. build between each other when we get raw and real yeah. and, you know, yeah. the fear is gone and the truth sort of <laughs> shoots out in many ways. But all of it, but it is like a veil has been lifted 
And yeah. all of a sudden that wall between the hearts is no longer there. And the connection, that real connection of the Christ consciousness can absolutely occur, but it requires that vulnerability. That's powerful. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And, and what's all a lot of judgment that they have, you know, because it's able to fix only in the idea that, you know, she's lying or she's not being honest with, you know, you just stay there in the more superficial, yeah. you know, yeah. well, it's, it's true. It's true. She's not being honest maybe with the, some people, but, but if you go deeper yeah. and you look inside, you go beyond the clouds, like the course say, you go yeah. beyond the cloud, you go and you try to see what really is there. You can yeah. see that always uh, there is love. Always, yes. that is, always that is life there. And that is what I saw. And when I saw that, it goes, oh, I fall. That was the beginning because that took a lot of problems. It was not so easy later. <laughs> that. Yeah. But, but that yeah. was the beginning, the, the beginning of a romantic relationship that started with me, the spark, and after yeah. she... And there was resistance on my part in the beginning. I did not, and I did not want this relationship because like he said in the beginning, it makes you know that relationships make you crazy. And the biggest fear I had was that this would divert us off of the path. Exactly. We were here together for a purpose and that purpose was to do this pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And I did not want to be distracted by that. I did not want a romantic relationship. And in the beginning, I didn't have that feeling for him. I mean, I appreciated him. I cared for him. I saw his goodness from the very first day that I met him. I, I could yeah. see. <laughs> what you mean? And it's a humor. <laughs> Humor's so, always great. <laughs> was that, that I could see, but I did not want the romantic entanglement because I did not want to be taken off of a path that had taken me a long time to get to. I had, you yeah. know, taken a long time to be able to have that that confidence and that courage to walk and to do this, and I didn't want to be distracted. And, you know, it was tense in the first couple of weeks of him, you know, trying and me pulling away. And that caused even more arguments and more tension. And, and did, what shifted it, for me anyways, was a moment of, it was a moment of tremendous vulnerability, what you mentioned before. Um, we had arrived in Greece, it was the town called Edessa. I had eaten something that didn't sit well, and here I was, um, here I was vomiting. I was vomiting and, you know, sitting and vomiting. So I was very sick, that, I was trembling, right, yeah. I was shaking, and he was there. He was there with me. He held, you know, the hair off my face. He was washing my face. He was cleaning up everything. Even though it was in the tub, like he was just, he was cleaning everything. And he was there and looked after me and cared for me. And then, you know, made me brush my teeth, made me do, and brought me to bed and put me to bed. And, and it was that moment of uh, realizing that um, it's only love that would do something like this. It's That's love. Right. Only love would do this. And that was when my that was when my barrier fell, when my veil, you know, with him fell. And and then since then, since then that's when the relationship began, but it also brought other <laughs> other things, other fears, you know, right? Other things that you have to look at when you enter into this kind of romantic relationship. And this is perfect because we have not talked uh, we have talked before about the relationship in, in other interviews um, and all that, but never we have talked from this perspective so clear that I see now, you know, we are studying the course for a few years now and yes, we are involved yes. totally every day. We are doing the lessons, we are together, we are working together. Mm -hmm. And there is a connection about this uh, holy relationship, how a special relationship yeah. can yeah. change to be holy relationship that connect totally what, with the story that we are telling here. Our biggest problem or our biggest barrier was our fear to loss or inner journey the more important for us was the journey of the soul. When we arrive to the conclusion, and we talk about that a lot, we, are not, we don't need to lose our inner journey. We can um, um, strength, strengthen. strengthen it together. I can support your inner journey. You can support my True. inner journey. And together, we are going to work together. And it's in some moment, we felt that God say us, you know, it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's okay until now. We can, now we know for the course that it's not necessary, you know, but because... Yeah. In the moment that you join in the purpose, you join in the more holy purpose that you can have, that is the, the spiritual path, yeah, you know, yeah. the path to know yourself, the path to walk beyond the physical, to go to, to the truth yeah. of who we are. 
then the, the special relationship that is special because had other purpose different of that mm -hmm. become holy because you have unite the holy purpose that you have with the holy purpose that another had and then a holy relationship had been created there yeah and that was when when we committed even when we 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 did a ceremony i i buy her a we buy uh, rings, um, you know, the, with the, our spiritual names, uh, or or uh, or vows, or vows, our vows. was yeah. especially was to yeah. follow the the path and to help each other yes. in that, and that yeah. is the, the greatest thing. That you, and that was the, what be, for that reason became a, a holy relationship. That is what the course say. Now our work is to to be capable to see the Christ not only in each other. But in everybody, to see the Christ okay. in you, yes. Barbara, to see yeah. the Christ in every creature in the world, to see the Christ in the neighbor, in everybody, even when still the appearance can show another thing and can show conflict. No, I know that behind, be, behind all these clouds and all that I see still, that is the Christ in everything in life. And there then, is only good. Exactly. And then the, in the holy relationship is a great help to do that. And yeah. whatever and doesn't need to be a romantic relationship say, can be a friend, exactly. can be a brother yeah. can be somebody that has the same holy purpose that you have and you say let's go to work together yeah and that work together become one of the mo most powerful things in that exists is not the most in, in, yeah. this, in this world that still we are dreaming no we are projecting I love that. I love that. And so you co-authored the book, Walking for Peace. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the book. Well, you know, um, it was uh, a journey in itself. It took about seven <laughs> that was to eight journey. years. Um, <laughs> and pretty much every fight that we had during our walk, we relived when we were writing the book. Because yes. once again, it was how I want to do it and how he wanted to do it. How you know what was important for him and what was important for me? Are we going to talk about spirituality or not spirituality? There was a lot of thing about to be authentical again. Yeah. So the same yes. that in the, the past. Same issues. I am capable. I had the courage to say publicly to my family, to my friends, what I believed at that time and what I did. That when I said that was one of the first, uh, the, 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 the the biggest barriers to at the same time. That's right. So it took us about seven, eight years to walk through it. We had to leave it behind more than once because it was threatening the the, the peace of the relationship and the harmony and everything, and what the the threat of separation. The same things that were that happened during walking were happening as we were reliving it. And so it was another opportunity to be able to allow that to be healed, allow, and especially for me, um, to allow that true, authentic voice that I knew wanted to speak through me for that to come through in the writing. I wanted to write the book that would sell. And his insistence was that, no, we are going to write the truth of what was happening to us. And so the journey for me became about having the confidence to face all those fears of what everybody's going to say, what everybody's going to think and all of that, so that the truth can actually talk through this book. And so that's how it came about. The course says what people think of you is none of your business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's you, exactly you know, it. It's in the world that we see still in the dream, what we see are all projections of the ego. Then True. In the moment that you are afraid that somebody is going to think bad or yeah. is going to interpret bad yeah. or, or has some intent, you are going to see that because you are projecting mm -hmm. that in yeah. the world. So the, until true. you don't see the Christ or you don't open at least yourself to change the way that you look at things and to try to see the Christ be, um, beyond anything yeah. and anybody, uh, you are going to be seeing what you want to see. Yeah. <laughs> then it's, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's difficult because, uh, yeah, everything outside is telling, you know, a book like that is not going to sell, yeah. only to a few weirdos that, <laughs> that, that, that they believe in, in <laughs> what it is or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's just it's right in this way. You write like a march for peace, yeah. uh, to create peace between Palestinians and Israelis yeah. and in the war. You know, if you write that, that is going to be a success for sure. You know, but this is not what happened, you know. <laughs> What happened yeah. was beyond that. Yeah. It was much higher than that. Then it was, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's not it's, it's not easy because the war is going, and uh, while you still have beliefs that this war of physicality and yeah. ego and competition is real, you are going to see proofs, yeah. witnesses 
or that that yes. you are believing. Then in some moment you need to break and to say, you know, whatever I see, I don't mind. This is what I believe, what my inner voice is telling, the spirit is telling me, and I'm going to follow this path. You know, and then that. when you can see the miracles, yeah, you will see the miracles because the world will show you what you have choose. Yeah. And in your heart, you know, in your heart, you know, that yes. you know, this doesn't require, you know, when it's truth, yeah. you know, when you are writing from the part of your mind or speaking from that part of your mind, <clears> that's <throat> trying to impress other people or to get them to like you or to get them on your side. That's not necessarily speaking from, from truth from authenticity, from spirit. And yeah. so this is whether it was walking, whether it's writing, whether it's speaking, you know, ultimately it is, um, it is a practice of allowing what is truth to come through what is in this moment, my voice, his voice into yeah. expression in the world. This is what we are essentially here to do, whether it's through his illustrations, whether it's through this conversation that we're having. We are, are the practice, and it is practice. It is it the is. practice of saying, I'm putting my own, you know, all my fears and all of whatever doubts and insecurities, those I give to what the Course calls the Holy Spirit. I give them to God. I give them to that voice, which will take care of them for me so that I am clear to all listen to his voice and to allow his words, her words, to flow through me into this instant. This is the practice. It is, it is the practice. It is about listening to that inner, uh, that inner knowing, that inner guide that says, here's what's being called for now. And it's interesting how we resist it. Nope. You know, it's like, you know, there's this, this little voice going, do this, do this, do this. And there's a part of us going, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing that. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's the, the journey that we're on continually is being willing to be vulnerable, to be courageous, and to stand in the consciousness of the one and allow the energy to flow unencumbered. And that for us, because, you know, we kind of like to control things. <laughs> like we have any. Really? <laughs> the grand illusion that we have control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's fear, you know. It's, it yeah, it's the fear to... Yeah to the consequences, the fear to, uh, we had a belief system that proof itself is showing us yeah. all the time what we really believe, what we want, and then it's confirming. We are confirming what we believe with what we see. They go, you see, you yeah, see absolutely. what I told you, I told you that this will happen and there it is. <laughs> because there it is. we are putting it there. Yeah. We talk about that in the, in the last, you know, it's a, it's a loop, you know, yeah. but there if is, you there is that you see it. Exactly. But there is yeah. something with you that know the way. Yeah. That, and that is yeah. the, 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 the wow. salvation. This is salvation. Yeah. That it, because me alone, Albertito alone, <laughs> he, wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't know. He would have no clue. Trying to control all the possibilities and all the things that can happen. and all. Yeah. The, no, but there is one with each of us, in, in all of us, because we are one. We are the same yes. one that is guiding us, you know, that know the way mm -hmm. and know what is the best for you and know what is the more convenient, know who you are, that you have no idea, I have no idea who I am, even when I think that I, sure. I know now, I know now after so, so many years of spiritual uh, search, I, I know who I am. I have no idea, I cannot see the light of what I am. I cannot see yeah. to be one with God. You, you yeah. cannot imagine that, to see the holy, perfect son of God. You cannot imagine what is that. We are coming, coming close, but still we have no idea. The one that knows, the part of our mind that knows is with us from the very beginning and is guided yeah. and is ready to show us the way. Yeah. It's beside us all the time with infinite patience to say, ask, stop, yeah. listen, I will tell you what to do. And, and really it's a work of being trust, trusting more and more in that voice because we know that yeah. that voice is there. But we are afraid to listen. We are afraid to listen sometimes because you don't want that tell you something that you don't That's want. True. to. true. <laughs> something against your plans. Well, come on. Well, and there's there are always things that we do get told that we go, wait a minute, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and that's the part <laughs> really? you know that we resist, right? We sit back and go, I, I don't want to go there. I remember years ago, uh, because I've been married five times, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I've had lots of practice <laughs> <laughs> getting it wrong, but I finally got it right. And it's interesting. I was doing a church service and speaking on Mother's Day and giving this lesson. And the voice in the back of my head says, you know, say you were married five times, mm -hmm. like say that. And I'm like, I ain't saying that. They'll never have me back. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be judged. I'll be stoned. I'll be whatever. Right. And finally, I blurt it out. And you, there's this whisper that goes. Through the conversation. <laughs> what, what, what did she say? And then I follow it up with, yeah, I thought I'd give Liz Taylor a run for her money, but I fell short. I met the right person and I became the right person. At the end, when I'm chatting with women afterwards, because I kept thinking, oh my gosh, they will never have me back. Afterwards, I had probably 11 or 12 women come up to me, some of them in tears going, that is the first and most honest message I've ever heard from a minister. And I'm so grateful that you gave voice to you know what I'm feeling, what's going on for me and that sort of thing. It was really powerful, but it was that vulnerability <laughs> and it was getting a push from the inside, right? It's spirit yeah. going, okay, it's time. Go yeah. ahead and talk about it because it's easy just to go, yes, I'm happily married. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, there's our agenda. What is the ego agenda? And then there is what the Holy Spirit knows you absolutely need in order to wake up and in order to what it calls to wake up everybody around you. And so you're not going alone here. You know, no, it's not just you. It's everyone with you. And yeah. the more that you're able to allow that voice and that yeah. truth to speak through you, it knows exactly the words and how they will land and how they will be used everywhere. And every so time, yeah. And, and well, that's what's powerful, right? Is that that journey of surrendering, right? Right. And surrendering is sort of giving into that highest potential. It's not a limitation. It's an expansion. It's happening. Exactly. It's happening. And because, that's what yeah. we miss sometimes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and you know, one of the, now that you're telling about the five marriage, uh, uh, the, the biggest, the biggest uh, impediment or the or barrier is, is what we are ashamed or afraid to, yeah. to show, you know, yes. it's, uh, and the course talk about that a lot. You need to bring yeah. the cold darkness, you need to bring it to the yeah. light. You, need, you cannot hide it, you cannot keep secrets. Oh. This doesn't mean that, that you talk to everybody. Think, no, but the first thing you need to to look, okay, what is that I'm afraid to share? Let's go to bring it here mm -hmm. and to see truly with the spirit, what is this, what really happened here? It was yeah. a sin, it was a something terrible or was simply a error, or simply was a mistake or yeah. simply was whatever it was, you know, don't be afraid to, to, to bring it out. And when you are not afraid to bring it out and to look at, you are not afraid to share it with others yeah. because yeah. others can learn too about that. You say, there is nothing um, bad to, to, to bring that out and to look yeah. at it and to say, you know, it was a honest mistake. I didn't know better, you know, you or whatever, you know, yeah. the situation. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know better and this is what happened, but I am ready. You now the course tells you, so the, the, is, is you can uh, accept that you don't know anything, yeah, but exactly. you are ready to know <laughs> yes. everything will be shown to you. Exactly. Yes. And you first need to accept, you can say, I don't know anything. And I don't know, I am thinking that this was bad or this was terrible or it was, I don't know anything. I am bringing it out and, and, and re, I am open to see this from another way. I'm open to yeah. see the truth in this. I'm open to see the truth in me. And then the fear goes, the chain goes, the guilt goes, yeah. and something new come, come outside. And after you see that nobody, everybody has his secrets of his things, and when you are liberating yourself, you are helping to others to do the same, to liberate themselves too. Uh, well, that's it, right? We all, we learn from one another, and the words that are spoken are ones that you know, everybody, whoever's listening, it is a gift for them as well. So that moving, moving from shame, allowing yourself to be vulnerable is such a powerful part of life and so important if we want to experience joy. Yeah. Now That's you've written some children's books and Alberto, your art is hanging behind you. Which oh, is well, <laughs> there are some pieces to, so there because so need to be done. <laughs> But you've got children's books as well that um, I am happy. Yes. Yes. I love that. Well, that came as a result of affirmations that we used to speak to our daughter. 
Yep. That was the, that was the, in, that's how it began with affirmations oh, yeah. before she would go to bed. We would tell her, start talking to her about, you know, who she is. You know, I am, yep. you know, I am powerful. I am strong. I am happy. I am, happy. I I am, am, I am, I am a spark of the light. I am a spark of the light. Exactly. You know, all, all this kind of, and this brought the idea to, to create a children's tale. Yeah. And, and the character Angela is, is based in, in on our daughter. In our daughter when she was yeah. that when that she age. was that yeah. age, yeah. And that, that particular copy is in three languages because we, you know, we saw that there are many families who have speak more than one language in their home. And so it's yeah. English uh, and French. Um, and yeah. It's, our home is French and English. There My you husband go. is uh, French Canadian and our daughter is fully bilingual. She's been schooled in French right from beginning. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's important to have more languages. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I love that. So what other children, like you have oh. another children's mm -hmm. book as well. Yeah, we, we gained some awards with this one. Mm -hmm. And then mm, years later, we, we felt the call to create a, 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 a second book, a, a, second, a, sequel? a, a sequel that is mm -hmm. My Family and I uh, should be there too. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. My family. My family and I. I also <laughs> are getting three languages. Uh, yeah. yeah, three languages. Um, um, but it's also in this case expanding our definition of what is family. What is family? Yeah. You know, yes. Expanding <clears throat> it, and so you know, including out to the universal family, our one human family, and yeah. and get, getting us to look beyond just what is just near, just the people closest to us, and that ultimately yeah. we are part of a universal family. Yeah, beyond the body. Even. Beyond the body, yeah. exactly. That's and that's a really important message, especially as we look at the things that are changing right now with you know, indigenous lives and, and black lives and just the way in which people tend to separate when separation truly is the illusion. Exactly. And, you know, how we come together acknowledging that there's only one race of people, the human race, and it's sort of dropping down those, those walls that have given the illusion of separation. Yes, it looks like you're there and I'm here, but the truth is there is no there is no space between us. There is that infinite energy, that divine presence. So I think, I love this, my family and I, that is fantastic. Um, and I've been writing children's books as well. I just oh, yeah. started doing a series called Just One You. Mm -hmm. and, um, so I got to, I got to start publishing them now. That's <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. coloring the soul. That's beautiful. Yeah, this this was a coloring book that we did with some for a for a few years. I was uh, doing portraits of the soul. Yes, uh, that were symbolic <clears throat> symbolic representations of who we are beyond the physical, and yeah. with messages from the divine. And then I had I did uh, hundreds of them, and then for, from a few ones of them, I created this coloring uh, book with the with the art line of each one. Um, and an inspirational message with each image, exactly. a channeled message with each with each of the each of the images. Uh, exactly, uh, she, channeled, she channeled the, the message um, from the image yeah. and, and I, uh, the illustrations and, and that was it was a, a beautiful. I had for to create for to make another couple of, <laughs> couple of, of books. Of, I had two or three yeah. more that I can make. That we time maybe I will bring them. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're coming to the end of our time. I can't believe it. Oh, and and Moni, you have this channelings book as well. Yeah, you know what? Um, I know we're we're short for time. I will say this is the when we talk about being vulnerable and we talk yeah. about allowing the exposing kind of this the yourself completely to the world this is the yeah. result of that because i received them. channeled messages and i had i needed to have the courage to, to share them and walking yeah. alone is for pilgrims uh is for pilgrims who are looking to prepare beyond just the physical journey the emotional spiritual wow. the mental journey that goes with being a pilgrim yeah so, and yeah. even when the name is walking alone and uh, what is yeah. is showing so, is, is that, that, you're that you're not walking alone <laughs> no, that is something we're never alone. we're never alone that's yeah. the reality well i'm so glad we had this conversation i'm gonna have to have you back with pleasure, <laughs> with pleasure. we <laughs> have scratched the surface of what it is that that you have to share so uh i will connect with you and we will find another time one final thought you got about 15 seconds Ooh. it's for me it's what we always say we never walk alone 
We are never alone. That loving presence is with us, in us, around us, in every single instant. It is love. Yes. It is love. And that is the, the, that is the purpose, too, of our, yeah. of our life. The real purpose, there is no purpose that go beyond that is, is love and is the inner journey is to know who we are and what we are is love. Yeah. Exactly. So. Well, I love both of you and I'm so oh, grateful you and you here. Oh, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I love you. I'm going to have you back. And for everybody watching, thank you for being here. This is The Joy Show. We will be back next week with another great show. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe, like, and comment, share, all that good stuff. Bye for now. Bye for bye now. Bye.